Hey, thank you for watching this video. There's more online at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and of course, here's the pie guy. All right, this is first grade, module six, lesson 24. And in this lesson, students are gonna be using dimes and pennies to represent numbers up to 120. And now the whole point of this, why are we using dimes and pennies? It's not so that students can understand coins, although that would be a nice bonus. The real purpose of us using dimes and pennies is to lead students into uh, that place value understanding. So uh, parents and teachers resist that urge to really focus on the coins and instead use the coins to focus on the really deep underlying math understanding, which is, in this case, place value. So let's get started. So how are you going to use dimes and pennies? So the idea might be to say, all right, well, let's take three dimes and two pennies. How much money is that? Let's find the value of three dimes and two pennies. Now, parents and teachers, I'm going to leave it up to you and not really make a strong recommendation for how kids come up with the value of three dimes and two pennies. Perhaps they're going to draw it out, three dimes and then two pennies, and then they might count 10, 20, 30, 31, 32. Or perhaps they might say, well, three dimes is 30, two pennies is two, 30 plus two is 32, um, 32 cents. Uh, I'm gonna leave it up to you. Now, the one thing I wanna point out, a couple of tricky things that I really wanna encourage, don't just leave the dimes and the pennies in this order, dimes in the front, pennies in the back. Uh, consider changing things around and putting five pennies and six dimes. The key to that is we want students to be focusing on the units. Remember that Eureka Math, that, that the real title of Eureka Math for K-5 is A Story of Units. And it's this, this is where we're talking about, uh, what we're talking about in terms of units. We want students to pay attention and not call this 56 cents. We really want students to recognize, oh, six dimes, five pennies, that is 65 cents. In a similar fashion, we want students here. We also you want to give students some problems where you're going to have to cash in some of these pennies. We want students to recognize, well, that four dimes is 40 cents, but 12 pennies, hmm, 12 pennies can be thought of, and you might even do this, one dime and two pennies. And so in which case we now have five dimes and two pennies and 52 cents. So parents and teachers, provide your students a lot of these variety of um, the, the combinations and have them find the value. And once students are really kind of uh, good at that, they're, they're, they're able to look at the, those combinations and find the value, now you're ready because this is basically the same thing, find the value. The only difference is we're giving it in image form rather than in word. Form. So we got two dimes and one penny, so that's two tens and one penny. So the idea is you're also seeing now we're really connecting the coins to explicitly using a place value chart. And that's the whole point, is for students to take something that they're com comfortable with and something that's not very abstract, something that's really concrete, coins, and connect that concrete experience with the abstract experience of place value. That's really intentional. And the point is to make that connection, not to just learn about coins. All right. So here we go. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we've got eleven dimes. So we're going to squeeze in eleven right here and zero ones. Now, parents and teachers, you kind of see that this is 110. But we're going to kind of, I don't know, not tell our students yet about the idea of regrouping and taking one of these tens and, or, yeah, taking 10 of these tens and turning it into 100. We're not bothering with that. We are going to leave our values in, in ones and tens, and we're not going to go into the hundreds column yet. Let's take a look here. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we've got 11 dimes. So we're going to record that as 11 dimes 
and we've got three pennies, so we've got 11 dimes, three pennies. Now, if we want, we can call that 113. That's perfectly fine, but we're not at this point going to worry about teaching the kids about regrouping into the hundreds column. We're just going to call this 113 and move on. So here, we got check the set that shows the correct amount. Um, find the place value chart, oh, fill in the place value chart to match 110 cents. So, well, first off, if we want to fill in the chart, we want our students to know that that's going to be 110 cents. So we got 11 tens and zero ones. Now, it's possible your students may need to um, go down here and look at this first. So, so let's see. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we've got 11 dimes. 11 dimes and no pennies. So we can kind of see that, oh, look at that. There's our, our answer. So we know that one's going to be the winner. But let's go ahead and take a look over here. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We've got 10 dimes, 10s and 1s. We've got 10 dimes and 1 penny. This is not the winner. <laughs> so we're supposed to put a check mark next to the one that correctly matched it. So it's this one, which is 11 dimes, 0 pennies. Now as we move on, so draw 79 cents using dimes and pennies. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to draw a bunch of dimes. And they don't talk about it, but they're saying in the most efficient way. So we're going to draw our 7 tens, our 7 dimes. So there's our 70. And then I'm going to have to squeeze in somehow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's our pennies, and there's our picture. So uh, there, of course, parents and teachers, we didn't have to do it this way. We could have used six dimes and 19 pennies. We could have essentially cashed in one of these dimes for 10 pennies. But um, at this point, we're going to be trying to um, be efficient, although... If a student does something other than seven dimes and nine pennies, verify. Make sure it actually does work and equal 79 cents. You may ask the student, how did you come up with the idea of, oh, one idea might be six dimes and 19 pennies. How did you come up with that? That would be an interesting question to ask a first grader. And then lastly, Draw 18, 118 cents using dimes and pennies. This is the exact same kind of process. We want our students to draw a bunch of dimes, a bunch of pennies. Parents and teachers make sure the, the value uh, does indeed equal 118. Uh, typically, we would expect the answer to be 11 dimes and 8 pennies, but there are definitely other answers that are possible. So you're going to use your professionalism and your math skills to assess whether the students understand what's going on. The real key here is do students under understand that tens and one pe dimes and pennies correlate to tens and ones. And that wraps up first grade module six lesson 24 using dimes and pennies to start getting into that place value and to represent numbers up to 120.